Hello, everyone. I'm Lou Zaccarella, a founder of the Intelligent Community Forum with another episode of No Place But Home, our special report on communities and community life uh, in the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, today, we are recording this from New York. The date is April 21st. Um, it has been 41 days since the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 spread a global pandemic. Today in New York State and city, where I live, the total number of new coronavirus hospitalizations was 1,300. That's new hospitalizations uh, statewide. Our deaths in the last 24 hour period were under 500 for the first time in 18 days. So as our governor said, the news has gone from horrible to just very bad. So it is. In the United States, there have been 42,000 deaths from the novel COVID disease and no therapeutics have appeared yet for treatment. Globally, New Zealand reopened its nation for business yesterday. That would be April 20th. The country followed the science and suffered 13 total deaths. Uh, we wish them well, especially our intelligent community in Wanganui, a city of 43,000 people. While the rural communities of the world uh, have not been hit as hard as the more dense places like New York City, where I am, they are equally vulnerable to this disease, which spreads very fast, as you will soon learn. On April 9th, when we recorded this next episode that you will see, South Dakota reported 329 cases. However, since that date, there have been breakouts at two meat processing factories, uh, one in Sioux Falls, where at least 600 people uh, immediately tested positive for the disease. This was followed by another similar breakout in the state where another 200 people tested positive and there are increased deaths being reported. So we understand the nature of this disease even in rural populations. So as I said, we recorded this episode with one of the world's top seven intelligent communities, Mitchell, South Dakota, about 70 miles from Sioux Falls. And uh, we did it on April 9th. At that time, uh, Mitchell was experiencing uh, a very good situation and uh, they continue to, although the threat now uh, is much more palpable, as I say, 70 miles up the road. We've got Mark Vox, who's the executive director of the Mitchell Area Development Corporation with us. He's joined by Sonia Moeller, the director of the Mitchell Area Chamber of Commerce, and Jen Johnston, who is the director of tourism and marketing at that uh, remarkable city of 16,000. So I'm going to go to that interview that we did with them on April 9th and take you out to Mitchell, South Dakota, here in the United States. Um, just so the people around the world get their bearings, um, can you tell us a little bit about Mitchell and then um, tell us what your current situation is as it regards the coronavirus disease right now? Do you have cases and um, are your hospitals able to accommodate them? And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. We have uh, three confirmed cases in our, in our county. Uh, we've been very fortunate so far, implemented a lot of proactive things on the front end uh, to try and get out ahead of the situation uh, in partnership and in good spirit with the city, our county leaders, our congressional delegation, and our businesses and residents of our community. So it's, uh, we had one of the first cases in South Dakota, we were a little concerned early on that uh, was it going to hit hard and, and heavy here, but so far, knock on wood, we've been very fortunate, no deaths in our community. All three people that have been confirmed have fully recovered. That's, that's very good news. Was the, was the first case uh, a, a community spread case or did it happen sort of in isolation out at one of the farms and so forth? It was travel. Uh, the, the, actually, the first two cases, I think all three cases have been deemed travel. We haven't had any community spread yet. And with regard to the 
the virus, obviously, um, you had, you know, an early scare, as Mark indicated. Um, what is taking place now with regard to further prevention? Because I know you have, and we'll talk about this a little later, I know you have a terrific uh, health care system, one of the best telemedicine programs I've ever seen. Uh, Jen, what's, what's the preparation now for what more than likely will be other cases? Well, our city government has implemented a, uh, I don't know, what are we even calling it? A social distancing <laughs> proclamation, I guess, that for the next, it goes through May 2nd, that we're doing takeout only, carry out only for restaurants, no more than 10 individuals. All of our fitness centers have been shut down. Any large gathering space of sort, which also does include the world's only corn palace, has been closed to the public now and will be until May 2nd. Now, just yesterday, our governor, Christy Nome, came out and said that the statewide effort will run through May 31st. Here locally, we haven't taken any more steps on that, but I would assume that that will go through the end of May following the state guidelines as well. But our city council did a really good job jumping on board and not just them forcing our small business owners to shut down and follow some of these protocols but we kind of our community did a really good job of doing that themselves already just listening to the recommendations from everyone across not just the state but the country and kind of jumped on it the city council just put a little bit more teeth in it last week which is as we can see knock on wood we haven't had any new confirmed cases in the past week so right our school system also jumped on board right away. And all of our students have um, e-learning that they have been doing now four weeks, three weeks, three or four weeks. Each student has um, either a Chromebook, an iPad, or a laptop that was issued to them. And they're able to do their e-learning at home. And we will not, our students will not return back to school this year. They will finish up the year at home. Now, in, in Mitchell, that may not be as, as big a challenge or a problem as it might be in other places because I recall from your Vision 2000 plan, when I was briefed on that, that one-to-one um, -one laptop and tablets were part of the, the, the program, as was a very, very robust broadband network. I think you have three carriers there, which is really unusual for a city your size. So um, is it your sense, uh, Sonia, that, you know, people, education will go forward? And, and is this one of those things where you said, you know, planning is now paying off? Absolutely, planning is paying off. Um, yeah, when, we've had, sorry to jump in on you, but we've had several conversations, obviously, yeah. internally over the past month in regards to the COVID virus that's out there. And every time it comes back to our plans have been in place, we're just now having to implement them. Um, thankfully, K through 12 has like Sonia alluded to, a one-to-one -one ratio with the electronic devices. So that was just a, a, a relatively easy transition. The hard part is the parents themselves being helping with the e-learning. <laughs> uh, but thankfully we've had that. You referred to our Avera healthcare system. We've done that for a long time. It's just being more utilized yep. today than it ever has, so. Well, I wanted to ask you about that, um, Mark and, and, and Jen, because Again, I recall you have a unified um, healthcare system. They also became your largest employer. And of course, there's the, the telemedicine component to this because of the fast distances out there. Um, a, is having it as an employer, a large employer, been beneficial? Uh, are, or are there jobs lost in that industry and others? And has the telemedicine capability had to expand to accommodate you know, the few cases that you have or, or you're not there yet? Yeah, we were talking this morning that um, our, our doctors and PAs are doing a lot of teleconferencing with their patients and how that has really increased because of the virus, not wanting people to go to the clinic. Um, and they're seeing that has just exploded with all of this. I can't remember what numbers you told me this morning, but it, we've seen a huge increase in that. 
Um, yeah. And as far as our hospital and, and clinical staff, um, some of them are now working from home. We had a conversation about that this morning, um, but we haven't seen where it's it's hurt any of our, our larger employer with uh, the hospital. It's really actually helped them. Very good. Are, are you seeing, um, when you talk about telemedicine uh, exams and cases growing, I, that does not surprise me. I'm going to assume it's also probably with good within the elderly population. Are you seeing any pressure put on your broadband network? Not that we've been made aware of. In fact, um, our local, um, we, as you stated, we have three entities that offer that. And they've actually reached out and they're offering free service to families who don't have it. So they can uh, utilize that for the e-learning program. So that would state to me that there's no stresses on the system right now. Well, that's, that's really good news. Um, Mark, with regard to uh, the local economy, um, you know, you don't have the corn palace in your town because, uh, you know, you are uh, the center of the media and advertising world like my city. We don't have a corn palace here, but we love your corn. Um, has, the, has the agricultural uh, sector of your economy uh, been affected at all? And, and is there a plan? This is something I was thinking about this morning. Is there a plan to sort of restore that economy or to help that economy should, should some of your producers, your farms and your farmers and your workers uh, become ill? I'll expand on that a little bit uh, in a more broad fashion to answer the question. About 10 days ago, we set up a series of conference calls with various industry clusters within our community to talk about the impact the virus is having on their like-minded businesses. So we held two uh, teleconferences specifically with manufacturing have to report manufacturing in Mitchell is having amongst their best years ever. Now, should any one of those large manufacturing plants come down with a case, that could flip on them immediately because they would have to shut down for a period of time. They've implemented measures, and the idea behind these calls was best practices, uh, how are you coping, what are you doing, what solutions are you implementing, that you can share with other business and community leaders to help with one another. You think about the word community, you unite around what you have in common. And that's really what we pulled off and then the impetus of, of what we've been doing in those calls. So the two in, and, and each one has taken a life of its own. Manufacturing's gone very well. We did one in the financial industry with banks completely different story. People are, are fearful. They're pulling money out of their banks. Your money is safe in the banks. It's insured. Leave your money in the banks. Um, they're now dealing with all of the SBA programs that are coming down the pipe that are very successful and, and helpful, but it's overrunning the banks as, as far as the process and, and new programs. And then uh, the ag industry and the, and the egg crisis. We've been hit from a number of different angles. We've had significant flooding. Uh, last year was either our wettest year on record or our second wettest year on record. So if they got the crop in, they couldn't get it out of the field because the fields were too wet. If they got it out, they had trouble getting it to market because so many roads and bridges were closed. So there's been that impact and now uh, cattle prices have hit rock bottom. So they're struggling significantly as well. If the spread becomes uh, a community spread, it certainly could have an impact on the health and, and availability of the labor. But uh, some of the programs that have been put in place at the federal level are specifically for the egg economy. We're in constant communication with both of our senators and our congressmen. We have another call with uh, one of our senators tomorrow and a group of business and ag leaders. So um, we're, we're, we're staying in touch with them as, 
as often and as much as we can. And there'll be adjustments to the program, uh, the federal programs coming down the pipe that the Congress congressional delegation is looking for our input on. So you've reached out obviously to the, to the, to the federal officials too. Um, I'm curious, Mark, um, when you had those conversations with your businesses, with your ag leaders and so forth, were there any, are there any specifics? Were there any ideas that came out of there that were in specific response to this type of a crisis? Yes, and, and one other cluster that we've done was specifically hospitality industry. We're a tourist town. We have 300,000 people that come through the Corn Palace on an annual basis. That's a big part of what we do. And with all of our bars and restaurants and hotels shut down, that's where, so you've got manufacturing still hiring like crazy, but the unemployment rate in the hospitality industry has just skyrocketed immensely. So depending on your industry cluster, uh, the impact varies significantly. So um, the calls were, uh, again, each one took on a life of its own. A lot of it is clean, clean, clean. Um, Avera led the way. They've got Avera Health Systems have a form that we they've given to us. And we've shared with all of our businesses in the community. And as somebody comes into a building or a business, they're manning uh, the front door, asking questions. How are you feeling? You're running at temperature. Where have you been? Have you been in contact with anybody that's traveled recently? Those types of things. Some have implemented. Uh, taking temperatures as people come into the door, into the facility. And depending on what temperature level is, they either take another temperature 20 minutes later or send them home. If people are, so, uh, so, so Avira is doing this, your healthcare no, provider? No, no. They've, they've supplied the form, but some businesses have gone out and bought the thermometers themselves and Just are doing it themselves. On their own initiative, that's amazing. Um, and I hadn't thought of I hadn't thought of the tourist economy. Um, I mean, you guys are on the on the pathway to uh, Mount Rushmore too, right? When you guys, I mean, they often stop in Mitchell, South Dakota, on their way out there as well, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so you lose that. Just three and a half hours um, east of one of the largest tourist attractions in the nation. So um, that is that will really take a hit. Thankfully, hopefully we can continue to flatten this curve and have a little bit of a summer season as we do expect that road trip travel will increase this year as the sense of safety riding in your own car than flying on an airplane. So that could hopefully help us down the road. Yeah. Well, gas should certainly be cheaper. Um, <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> right? Um, you know, the other question I had, as I recall, South Dakota is one of the uh, few states now in the United States that doesn't have a, a total uh, stay in place order. Am I correct? That is correct. Yeah. And are you are you um, satisfied that what you're doing at the local level uh, is adequate to, you know, protect yourselves and and anything that might come in from the outside? Although I, I suspect, as you say, uh, not as much will uh, over the next couple of weeks or, and months. They predict that our peak will happen in June. Um, but yes, I, I think our community, um, as you stated, we're just small. We're 16,000 people. And we're, we all look out for each other. We're all in this together um, as we are globally. But in our town and within our county, we help each other out. And we understand the importance of it. And I think that makes it easier for us to stay at home um, or in Last night, my kids were out in the backyard playing Frisbee with one another. I don't know when the last time was that uh, they had done that. So it's, um, it's creating opportunities for our community to help each other. We see businesses helping businesses. Um, we see neighbors helping neighbors. So um, for us, I think it's, it's just how we are. Um, we're here to help one another um, while helping ourselves. One of two of the other topics I wanted to talk about were, were communication with your community. And again, I, I know um, you guys are a very, very tight community. And that is obviously 
as you're saying, serving you well now. Um, but we're hearing, and it's inevitable, that rumors will come uh, forth from all over the place, all different ideas about this disease and so forth. And we're asking communities, what is the city and the chamber doing to you know, make sure that they can monitor any rumors that aren't true and to make sure that they become the trusted source for facts? So how are you supporting your citizens that way and then in other ways? Well, like we said to you earlier, we had a lot of these programs already in place. We do e-newsletters to all of our member businesses once a week, and that's there. The city also has a community app that they have utilized for a long time. Um, residents know that they can go to those resources to gather the information. When this all broke a month ago, we jumped on the horn right away, and our community website, MitchellSD.com, it created a new COVID-19 page. We're all receiving hundreds of emails every day about what to, what to believe, what programs are good, what are not. So here internally um, at the Chamber Development Office, we're weeding through those every single day and posting those resources on our Mitchell's COVID page to help residents, community leaders, business owners, everyone here in town. And, We've done a good job putting it out there, not just through our e-newsletter channels, working with city and county leaders and um, social media. Social media has actually helped tremendously here in our mm. community as well, which it has in the past, but it's just another tool that we've used. Final question for you. Um, we've obviously got a lot of debate going on. Uh, both at the national level uh, and at the city level uh, among your peers in the intelligent community network about how we find a middle way to make sure that we ensure public health, but also bring our economies back. Have you, Mark and Jen, given any thought to what that looks like in a rural community uh, like yours? We've given thought to it. So there's first and foremost, the physical health of people You've got the mental health aspect that absolutely cannot be overlooked, whether it be from the virus itself, whether having it, the fear of getting it, and the financial health of individuals and businesses as well, which also can contribute to the mental health. So it's much bigger than, than just the physical and economic health. We're, we're really concerned about the potential and the layoffs and you know if, if you go back over the history of time uh, the potential for civil unrest that can follow as well from all of those things combined it's um it's a frightening time we're staying positive it helps to have great minds and talent like the two young ladies in the room with me leading our way um, in staying engaged with residents and businesses. Um, we're, we're open for business, but we're not physically, we're not open for business. But again, as Jen and Sonny both talked about, the communication that we're putting out there, uh, the phone is ringing off the hook. We're trying to be as resourceful as we can with the uh, somewhat limited opportunities, at least from a person-to-person -person yeah. standpoint. It's about communication um, and about relationships. Yeah. Well, let's, let's see what happens. Um, Sonia Moeller, Mark Vox, and Jen Johnston, I really, really thank you for making the time to, to be with me and to talk to me. It's so, it's so great to see people from Mitchell again. I haven't seen you in a couple of years. So um, thank, thank you for doing this. Thank you for inviting us. We appreciate it. Well, it's going to be very helpful. So uh, again, I, I, we wish you luck. And of course, um, we're here for you, and we know that you're there for the other rural communities who we're going to be speaking to as we go forward. So I'd like to thank you all again. Um, this No Place But Home series is produced by the ICF as a service to its network of communities and your community around the world. Shout out to our producer, Matt Owen. Uh, we hope you'll join us for future conversations. We'll be putting them online as soon as we conduct them. And again, I want to thank the community of Mitchell, South Dakota, as soon as you're allowed to travel, you have to see the Corn Palace. 
and you have to go out there and, and eat the steak and eat. It's just an amazing place. So, uh, and it's an intelligent community and you can, uh, they'll, you guys will take everybody around for a tour, right? And show them why they're intelligent. So thank you everyone. This is Lou Zaccarella for the No Place But Home series on behalf of the Intelligent Community Forum. Stay safe, everyone.